when you visit the zoo and see animals, you might think, well, that's simple. They just sit around. In fact, sometimes there's research going on to make sure that we're giving them the very best care we possibly can. In this case, it's our little penguins. When you see this pool, you'll notice there's tubing and little electronics in it. You might think, what's that? Well, the keepers are studying how often they swim. And with that, they're going to help these guys stay healthy. And we have equipment on their bands. It's similar to a Fitbit for a penguin. And that's what's really exciting about that for us is we're using this technology to track their physical activity and possibly improve their health. So whenever the penguins are in the water, we have three different antennas set up in the enclosure in strategic places. Uh, so whenever they get into the water, we're able to pick up exactly who, when, and where. Uh, and then, as you'll notice, uh, the ramp to get outside of the enclosure, uh, the ramp to get outside of the pool, um, is covered with a little bit of grass there to cover up uh, our fourth antenna, which of course collects uh, data when they are leaving the water. So the goal is to uh, understand exactly when they're getting into the water, uh, how long they're spending in the water, and then of course most importantly when they exit the water. Well, one of the main reasons we're doing this is penguins and zoological care tend to uh, get a condition called bumblefoot and we would like to get them to spend more time swimming as an attempt to prevent that or to improve the condition of their feet. Bumblefoot is an inflammation of the feet, usually from standing around too much. It can be some other conditions that cause bumblefoot that are related to it, sex, size, activity level, the substrate that they're on, and we're, that's part of what this research is to figure out is what are those factors that contribute to it? Really, we, we had a unique problem. And our unique problem was that we understand that bumblefoot is related to uh, swimming behavior, but we didn't know how much, right? How much swimming? Uh, and that's a really important question for any uh, zoo institution. So, uh, and, and we couldn't collect that data simply by having, you know, being out here and marking down when they swam. We really needed to know every single instance they were in the water. So when you have a collection of 30 plus little blues and you want to know each individual how much are they swimming, that's a, that's a tough problem. Um, so we originally thought cameras uh, with the, this big, beautiful enclosure wasn't going to happen. They're too small. We couldn't identify them. Um, so we started to look what, what's out there, what sort of technology could we implement that would allow us to do this. And um, radio frequency ID is not uh, commonly used uh, in, in zoo settings. Uh, to our knowledge, this is the first time it's been implemented and used in this way. The little penguins, just it happens that we have more bumblefoot in our collection of little blue penguins. Uh, they're the smallest species of penguin. Uh, they're really interesting. As you can see, they're pretty loud. <laughs> And also we have a pool on the inside and an outside and it allows us to track indoor behavior in water and outdoor behavior in water. When the antenna read uh, one of the tags, it, the information gets sent to our da data logging uh, box over here and then we come in and uh, download the data, right? It's either via Bluetooth or directly connecting and we get a, a full download of every tag, every instance it was picked up, again, who, where and when. Um, and then on that, we do a little bit of data manipulation to simply see, okay, if we pick one of our penguins, let's say mango, right? Mango, how much did mango swim in this day? Uh, what does mango's bumblefoot look like this week? How does that change? And then, of course, later when we start implementing some of our manipulations, uh, specifically training them uh, explicitly to swim more, that's, in my opinion, where the real fun stuff happens. That's where um, our experiment begins, seeing if we can uh, actively manipulate uh, bumblefoot via changes in their behavior. We happened to notice there was a correlation with certain birds that when they swam more, small conditions of bubble foot improved. So there seems to be some correlation that suggests that there's a connection with swimming time and bubble foot. This penguin is one that had some incidents of bubble foot that went away that we were able to correlate it with. Uh, the amount of additional swimming time. We're really excited to see how they're, without any manipulation, right, what, is their, what does their behavior look like winter to summertime? Because again, that's information that I don't think is very well known, not only at the Cincinnati Zoo, but in any, in any zoo institution. Um, so we're really excited without any manipulation how their behavior changes. So one of the, the easy things is penguins in their natural habitat only swim and uh, they only uh, find their food in the water. And in a zoo, sometimes they get hand-fed or on a plate, 
And what we want to do is start mimicking more natural behavior by getting them to eat in the water. So when your reinforcement comes from a certain place, you spend more time there. Um, like I said, in, in New Zealand, Australia, they never get food on, on land. It would only be in the water, so they spend a lot of time in the water. And what we are wanting to do is start mimicking more of that behavior here. This summer with our manipulation, uh, getting them to swim more and, and being able to really control for those changes, uh, we will have something very tangible and very real by the end of the summer. So the next time you visit the zoo, make sure you come to the children's zoo to see the little penguins. This is going to be an ongoing study and the results will be shared with zoos everywhere to keep everybody's penguins healthy and swimming.